Hello again, welcome to another episode of ESL Journey with Teacher May. And of course, this is me again, I'm Maven, and it's just another incredible day of working. This time, I realized after a long day of work, there are different kinds of ESL students pala talaga. And I came up with a list of them. As an ESL teacher, you should be aware that there is a big range of students you would encounter to most of the companies. Some would offer only kids. But to most of the companies, they would be giving you from zero level, like the beginners, up to the adults, professionals, may mga alam na sa English, they could speak English fluently. They just decided to have online English classes to practice free talk, makapagkwentuhan, or to improve their speaking skills, and so on. All of them, I can say, are pretty challenging because, for example, for kids, you should exert so much effort to make the class fun. It should be, uh, you should be able to encourage, especially the sheer ones, yung mga mahiyain. You should encourage them to do more, speak more, enjoy learning with you. And as for adults, you should not be intimidated on how clever some students may be. That they tend to, sometimes they test how good you are. Sometimes they want it to be dominant. Sometimes they would see if you are skilled enough. And all of those were normal. You just have to have your own strategy for you to survive. So in this episode, you're going to learn the different kinds of students you will encounter in ESL teaching or online teaching and how to handle each of them. So let's begin with number one, the visual learners. These kids are very dependent on seeing things in the blackboard. They learn by looking at the pictures, diagrams, videos, songs. They wanted to listen to songs too because they see some pictures in the videos and so on. So they even learn by just looking at you. They learn the best when they see you. They learn how you pronounce the words, how you open your mouth, how to do things, how you reenact, especially the verbs. They understand it in that way. They tend to be very observant to the pictures you show to them. And sometimes they forget to listen attentively. Kasi nagpo-focus sila sa nakikita nila or dun sa mga ginagawa mo. But the good thing about these students is that sila yung attentive sa klase. Like they want to draw, they want to write some things. They would love it if you would give them instructions. What will they do? How will they do some things? They are very active. And they don't get easily distracted about things. And one of the things that would make them fail from becoming very attentive to you is when you don't engage yourself to what they need. So for me, imagery, it's the best way for you to engage yourself to them. You give them pictures, show them pictures. You need to turn your ideas into images because they look at that. They are very visual. Number two, the verbal learners. These students, they talk a lot. <laughs> they like cuentos, they like sharing things, they like to tell you what happened within the day or even yung mga nangyari outside the classroom. They like being asked questions. Like the verbal learners, they have a really broad vocabulary, which allows them to speak more, express more. However, not all students have a very broad vocabulary na sometimes they're too much excited to be sharing things to you kaya lang hindi mo maintindihan kasi nga they don't have the vocabulary they don't have enough vocabulary some are also verbal but they like to be reading some stories they like to be drawing things writing things writing words on the blackboard it's pretty exciting na makajoy right sa kanila kasi yung mga gusto nilang topics they are very imaginative they are very creative and they are talented and they are very excited to be talking to you sometimes there will be some students who would ask where's my dog or teacher why are you not eating yet they would ask those kinds of questions 
or teacher when was the last time you go to the beach do you like swimming so they are just very open about the things that just came up on their minds and they're willing to talk about it. and one funny story I encountered some of my regular students they're booking morning classes and then magbubuk na naman sila ng afternoon and then magbubuk na naman sila ng evening and then af like at the end of the day they will be asking me teacher why are you still available in the evening eh parang nagkaroon na tayo ng klase kanina umaga why are you available all day some of these students they don't want to talk about the book they don't want to talk about the lesson it's okay na just to have a free talk with them or play games with them however it uh, you must be able to let them understand that pwede mo silang pagbigyan maybe once or twice but it should not happen all throughout the class unless you have um, unless nakausap mo yung parent na ganito yung gusto ng student so ibibigay mo yan sa kanila you should be teacher enough to let them know when to stop especially when they're getting away from the topic Number three, we have the kinesthetic learners. So these kids are also very active, but they tend to focus on physical activities. Like they want to play, they want to go outside, they want to move. Sometimes what I do with these students, I tend to ask them, Hey, what's your homework for today? Did you finish it? Tapos papakita na lang sa'yo, tapos na yung assignments nila, yung mga homeworks nila. And they like to be inviting their friends over. But the problem is, kapag di mo na entertain yung they tend to get bored. If these things happen, don't punish them. You can just, you know, try to get along with them, still get along with them, try to do something that would catch their attention, like maybe some videos, or you start playing some songs, they can start dancing, they can start singing with you. So, talagang talo ako sa kanila pagka ganitong klase ng students yung mga na-encounter ko, especially on days na I don't feel well, or I'm so tired, tapos may mga nagbubuk na ganitong klase ng students, especially sa afternoon, naantok na antok ka, pero talagang kailangan mong maging active, you know, super hirap ng mga ganitong students din. And these are the ones na nakakapagpa-stress sa akin, lalo na sa mga kids na, you know, sumisigaw sila. It's just their natural way of, you know, being Sa classes in ingay, sumisigaw. After the class, my dear friend, celebrate. <laughs> number four is the interpersonal kinds of students. Yung number two and the number three, both of them are interpersonal students kasi ang active nila, they want you to engage to their class and they want you to be friendly enough to focus on their needs, to give them your attention. And these interpersonal students are very socially inclined, shall I say. Like, almost, they treat you almost as if you were their playmate or your friend, than just, you know, as their teacher. So you really have to collaborate with these kinds of students. You need to try to throw funny questions or give them scenarios, like let them think, let them empathize to stories. It's a big possibility that they, they tend to disturb you from your learning objective on that class. And what you should do, you just always need to remind them to go back to the topic like, okay, medyo malain na tayo, balik na tayo dun sa topic natin. Yan. You need to drag them over learning the book and without really in interrupting their topic. You won't let them feel bored that way, diba? Another one, I think this is the last one. Interpersonal kinds of students. Sila yung mga tahimik lang, tapos they would like working alone. Sila yung mga self-motivated, tapos meron silang mga individual goals. And then these learners, they prefer to be working alone na. So madalas ang nagbibook sa kanila is yung mga parents nila na pinipilit na lang silang magklase or pinipilit silang magkaroon ng mga extracurricular activities after school. Sometimes they are just tired. Maybe that's why it's hap um, that's why they are behaving that way. But these kinds of students, like 70 to 80 percent of the time, they are bored sa klase. So that's a challenge. That's a big challenge actually, kasi nakakatrigger siya ng inis. Nakakainis sila minsan. You know, you're doing your best, you're explaining things, and then afterwards, when you ask questions or after the review. You will ask them questions if they understand. They will just say no. 
uh, I don't understand, I don't really know what that is. If ever that happens, I try to ask them, maybe, kapag napansin ko na once or twice, hindi talaga sila interesado sa klase, I ask them straight away, like, how are you? You can actually tell them na, nakikita ko na parang ganito yung behavior mo, is there any problem? Is there something else you would want to talk about? Or na pwede natin gawin dito sa klase na to? You know, just try to empathize to their situation then. Kasi di ba hindi naman sa lahat ng pagkakataon excited tayo sa mga klase. Ganun din sila. And I don't do it to manipulate the class or to ask personal questions, but to try to fix something that has been constantly appearing pag sila yung students ko. So into consideration, these are the students I engage with as an ESL teacher for years and it's just how I handle them knowing that the schedule is so flexible which means sometimes I work 10 hours a day the longest was like 12 hours a day which I don't recommend that but I just shared because it's just how stretchy the schedule is however I naman ako ng day off like I day off for the entire week or three days straight yeah, but teaching for long hours is very exhausting but you always need to look okay in front of the camera and you always need to be professional whoever the student is and there's no excuse of getting tired because you know one-on-one -on -one class lang siya so yung mga nangyayari the rest of the day they don't have they have nothing to do about it it's not that challenging if you are enjoying or if you love talking with kids if you like engaging with them if you like having interactions with kids so these are the things that i do every day with my students which are kids so ayan pro tip don't overdo things it will make you exhausted and just always hydrate yourself so again this is teacher may see you on my next episodes and thanks my friends for watching